Hi, welcome to the next video lecture in Introduction to Machine Learning. Um, this time we're going to be talking about um, the computational aspects of finding splits or optimizing splits in a tree. So, um, the first thing to, um, to point out here um, is that trees have the very nice property that any monotone transformation of one or several features will never change the value of the splitting criterion or the structure of the tree. All it does, it will well change the numerical value of the split point or rather it will transform it in the same way yeah, in a monotone transformation. So for this example here, for example, say you have X, 1, 2, 7, 10, 20, and you have y's 1, 1, 0.5, 10, 11, yeah? Then, um, well, the best split point, obviously, along x, I mean, you can just see that, is something between 7 and 10. Like we said, we always take the middle between two neighboring values. So the split point here is if x is below uh, 8.5, yeah, then I will predict 0.83, which is the mean of these three values. And well, if um, X is above that, I will predict the mean of these two values, 10, 11, that's 10.5. So, okay, let's round it, 10. Um, all right. If we now do a log transform on X, Essentially nothing changes. The best split point is between these two observations. Okay, so we'll take the middle between these two observations. Now on the log scale, X we're splitting at 2.1. Yeah, but nothing else changes. So um, that's an important robustness property, so to say, of trees that they don't change their structure. They don't change their predictions. Um, if you do any monotone transformations uh, for of the features. Um, now, we haven't talked about nominal or categorical features in the context of uh, tree learners so far. Um, and there's a complication here. Let's say um, we have a feature XJ that has five possible categories, A, B, C, D, E. Um, and then any split on that feature yeah, for example, would assign these three levels to the um, left child node and these two categories to the right child node. Okay. Now, the problem is that if you're looking for an optimal split on a nominal feature, you have to look at all possible subsets of the levels of that feature. So if, if your feature has M possible categories or levels, there are two to the power of M minus one, minus one possible ways to split that up. So if you think about something that has 11 categories, yeah, that's two to the power of 10. God, that's 1024 different ways to split up that feature. And I mean, honestly, 11 levels isn't even that much. Yeah, you can have levels, you can have, you can have features with 20 or 30 categories, and then these numbers start to get really crazy. Yeah. So this becomes very large very quickly. Every time you add another category to a feature, the number of possible splits of that feature doubles. That's another way to think about that. Yeah, two to the power of M minus one. Um, so this is, too expensive to do actually we it's almost impossible to really do this exhaustive grid search then just computationally um, fortunately it's a problem that we don't have to face um, because for some loss functions specifically the squared error loss and in binary classification problems no matter whether we use the price score or the entropy or whatever uh, we can define very clever shortcuts. Let me show you. Yeah. So um, the idea here is to turn the nominal feature into an ordinal feature 
because as a matter of fact we can order the categories of that feature by the proportion of well for binary classification for one outcomes yeah so how the relative proportion of ones versus zeros in our target variable for each of the categories of the feature. And we can sort the categories according to these relative frequencies of uh, the target variable. And then we can treat the feature as ordered according to basically how likely is it that a person with that specific level of the feature will have a target value of one. Yeah, so it's ordered. And as soon as it's ordered, this problem is way, way more simple because for something that is ordered, we don't have to look at two to the power of m minus one possible splits. We only have to look, well, every possible split between these m categories. So that's m minus one splits. Yeah? That's way, way, way cheaper to do. Okay. So essentially, um, if you have a feature with four possible categories, you compute the frequencies of class one for each feature for the data in the node that you're trying to split. You're ordering them. And then all you have to figure out is, well, should I split B versus ADC? Should I split BA versus DC? Or should I split BAD versus C? Yeah, and uh, guaranteed there's it's, it's guaranteed that there's no other combination so you, if you if you work to put b and d in the same leaf and a and c in the same leaf it's guaranteed to be a worse split um, than anything else that we're doing here yeah so we're using basically the information about the target variable that we have to only look at the splits that are actually relevant for solving the problem okay very clever shortcut for nominal features. Um, this is guaranteed to find the optimal split. Yeah, um, we can do something very similar for regression trees with a squared error loss, where we simply um, compute the conditional mean of the target variable, given um, the category, the, the conditional mean of the target variable for the data in that specific node that we're trying to split. Yeah and then ordering the categories um, according to that mean. Um, it has to be said though, that these simplica simplifications, these shortcuts for normal features, they are not generally applicable. Yeah, so they work for binary classification, they work for um, squared error loss. It's not known whether that works or we don't know whether they, it hasn't been proved that, we, that it works for other loss functions as well. And it also hasn't been shown to work for multi-class problems. Yeah, so it's not clear um, that this can be extended there. Um, yeah, so this is the idea for um, continuous responses. We take the mean of the outcome um, for all the data in each uh, feature category, we sort it and then we only we treat the nominal um, factor variable as an ordinal factor variable. And so we only have to look at this split, this split and this split. Okay. Um, all right. <clears throat> now, okay, this was um, this was a short um, presentation on how we can avoid the additional complexity when we're splitting nominal features, at least for squared error loss and for binary classification. Um, another very nice feature of classification and regression trees that we have to talk about in this context of computational aspects of split finding is that carts actually have a way to deal with missing feature values fairly automatically. And the way this is done is that, well, first of all, when we're building, when we're evaluating splits and we have partially missing data, then obviously we can only use the observations for which we have that feature va variable available. Um, and that can actually induce a bias in the construction of the tree. Yeah, um, 
it's an interesting topic, um, but more on the side here. Yeah, the, the selection of features for splits is a little biased towards features that have lots of missing values because there it's easier to find a really good split. All right, um, not what we're talking about. We're talking about surrogate splits here. Um, what is typically done in um, the construction of such a tree is that while we are looking at splits, the tree also, because it has to investigate all possible features and all possible split points anyway, what the procedure does, it also makes a note of which other possible splits would have led to almost equivalent results in the child nodes as the split that was optimal and actually got chosen. So basically, we have a bunch of surrogates, um, alternative splitting rules in each node that would have given us almost the same results. Yeah? So basically here you have fallback rules that you can use if you're now feeding new test data, unseen data to your tree, where you have um, some data missing. Because even if the data is missing that you need to figure out, well, should this observation go into the left branch here or into the right branch here, what uh, the classification and regression trees do then is they look up the surrogate split rules and assign the data to the left or the right branch according to that. Yeah. So this is a pretty great way to um, avoid problems with missing data that is built in into trees. That is also fairly unique to um, tree learners, the way that they do that. All right, um, that's it for the computational aspects of split computation. Thank you for listening.